Hello everybody, this is Mike with Sunset Learning. I'm here to talk to you today about the uh, kind of new product with CVP called the Cisco Virtualized Voice Browser. Let's get into that thing. So uh, for I guess brevity purposes we'll just refer to it pretty much from henceforth as the Virtualized Voice Browser or you might hear people refer to it as the Virtual Voice Browser. And technically it's called the Virtualized Voice Browser but Big picture overview of what is the virtualized voice browser. Um, you may very well remember that within CVP we've got an item historically known as the Voice XML Gateway. Voice XML Gateway was really the IVR. It was the device that was playing the prompts, collecting the digits from the caller, uh, queuing the call. It's really where the RTP stream was interacting with the caller. I refer to it logically as the really the IVR of the solution. So. We historically had a voice XML gateway. Now we've got this thing called the virtualized voice browser. You may not say it replaces the voice XML gateway. You might say it's a, an additional component that could augment, could replace your voice XML gateway, but uh, your voice XML gateways are iOS devices, so they're at their heart a router. Uh, this is really a host VM running really the, just this, you might say, what the voice XML gateway used to do. It still does, really. Uh, those of you who are customers who have purchased CVP ports, um, I guess apparently uh, ports, your purchase date is greater than August 6th of 2016, you have an entitlement to use this virtualized voice browser. That comes right from uh, someone at Cisco, uh, so we'll believe that to be true. Um, no real license file, at least right as of yet, with this virtualized voice browser. It does have a licensed Mac, but you don't really apply a license file to it, so kind of entitlement to use. Uh, why would you run this virtualized voice browser? One of the uh, theoretical benefits is a lower total cost of ownership. Total total cost of ownership per IVR session, perhaps compared to your iOS voice browsers. Uh, supports multiple deployment models in multiple forms. If you're running standalone CVP or packaged, or UCCE or hosted. Uh, be that in an edge or centralized deployment model, this device could very well work for you. Uh, the profiles that when you when you install the virtualized voice browser, which we'll talk about, it's really a um, Express-based interface, so it's a Linux-based engine that you're loading this application up on top of. It supports a couple of different profiles when you load up the OVA. Supports uh, what at least right now is listed as small and medium profiles. That gives you basically either 480 or 600 ports, depending on some server specifications that uh, you're uh, specifying, I guess, with that profile. Uh, again, what does this thing do? It really takes uh, the place or augments your voice XML gateway, so it supports all of your micro apps that you've uh, historically are running, supports your external VXML, so that's all of your call studio applications. If you're using speech recognition or text-to-speech, it supports that as well. Um, this uh, overview I'm giving you here is based on 11.5. 11.5 supports G711 only, so make sure you take a look at the roadmap to see maybe what's coming in the future. Um, this uh, virtualized voice browser has some functionality you'll likely see if you use the Ops Console and some bulk configuration utilities today. I'm just going to take a look at the web administration interface directly, as well as uh, some secure shell options that you have. Um, the web interface, very much like uh, most of the other applications that are Linux-based from Cisco, support uh, different URLs. One of the ones we'll look at today is the App Admin URL. And remember, this virtualized voice browser we're telling you is new. Um, that's in theory true, but once you take a closer look at it, you'll see that it runs really on the uh, Contact Center Express engine as a, a back end, uh, really where it was developed from. Uh, that's either kind of crazy or brilliant, depending on your perspective. If uh, some of you remember back to the days of uh, Internet Service Node, which is what CDP was called way, way back in the day. Uh, when MicroApps first came out with ISN, they were really Contact Center Express applications. They were AEF files. Uh, and, of course, the evolution of CCE before CVP came along was that we used this thing called IPIVR, which is the IVR based on 
what we see in context inner express minus the CSQ functionality. So uh, once you'll see this virtualized voice browser and realize that it's out of basic heart express, then, you know, I guess the world is up to you to consider the possibilities of what we might be seeing in the future. So, um, you know, all that express knowledge you knew about may still, in fact, be valid. Let's take a closer look at this thing. So again, as mentioned, this virtualized voice browser, a component that could logically take place or augment your historical voice XML gateway, which would be a device running on an iOS platform, so your router platform. These are the rest of the components of a CCE solution. Should be noted this virtualized voice browser uh, could also again be used not only in UCCE, but packaged, hosted, uh, standalone CVP as well. So uh, I was going to do this, I guess, a little bit more interactively, but it's, uh, you know, there's not much to really see within the VB admin itself. So I'm going to show you a couple screenshots here. Um, you know, it doesn't sound any different. You can see calls running on this thing, but, uh, you know, nothing amazing to actually see or view that's much different really than calls on a voice XML gateway. So let's take a look at what your options are here within the virtualized voice browser admin tool. If you point your browser to uh, the IP or host of your virtualized voice browser slash app admin, you get the VB admin screen. You also notice very much like other Cisco applications, you've got a couple of other URLs you can navigate to, serviceability, OS administration. Uh, so it should be somewhat familiar if you administer any other multitude of Cisco applications. Uh, let's see what our options are here within VB Admin. So starting on the first off, top left-hand side under system, system parameters, a couple of basic options should be noted right now. Again, in 11.5, only codecs you have are 7.11 mu and a law if you open up this drop-down list. So no 7.29 is supported. Not much to change on this first system parameter screen overall. Under the applications drop-down menu, a couple of options. You've got application management. You've got prompt management. Those of you that run on uh, work with Contact Center Express should be familiar with applications. Applications are, applications are AEF files that historically are built within the Contact Center Express editor. So you can see that Cisco's provided a couple of default applications that are built into the system. Uh, three of them named uh, Ringtone, Air, and Comprehensive. So those of you that are familiar with CVP should be familiar with Ringtone and Air. Those were historically tickle scripts that ran uh, usually on your ingress gateways. So now we see them really on our voice XML gateway here, our virtualized voice browser. Uh, and sure enough, those ringtone and error applications, you're going to see that uh, we've got the 9191 and the 9292 uh, patterns that are pointed to those applications themselves. And this thing called comprehensive, we'll take a closer look at that. Comprehensive is actually what's taking the place of historically our bootstrap tickle, which would have been running on our voice XML gateway. So you're going to see that our uh, patterns in the forms of our label and correlation ID actually point to this application called comprehensive. Let's take a closer look at this comprehensive application. If I drill down into it, into the Cisco script application named comprehensive over here, I can see that I've got a max of 480 sessions. This is modifiable. Uh, that exactly equates to the fact that when I loaded up the AEF and selected the small profile, as mentioned, that gave me 480 IVR ports on this device, if you will. So it looks like I could limit uh, if I wanted to or needed to, the number of sessions that I would see on this particular device. Again, as noted, this application is really kicking off a script. This script is provided by Cisco named cvpcomprehensive.aef. So the name comprehensive is simply, you might say, an alias for CVP comprehensive. That's actually the name of the application editor file that's been produced somewhere on the back end. Uh, note that this uh, comprehensive application also supports secure communication and those of you running uh, systems using significant digits to perhaps keep calls at a particular site. This application, of course, supports your SIG digits as your bootstrap.tickle script would have done in the uh, parameters contained within. Uh, Cisco provides you one trigger out of the box. All these sevens up here are assumedly a default uh, type 10 VRU a label that's been configured along the way with the system. Our particular label for my lab in this case is an 8999. It's actually 
nine of those nines, but using stars here to denote wild cards for inclusive of things like your correlation ID, which could be a variable value. So 777 is included from Cisco. 8999 I added in here, and that's, uh, again, my label plus correlation ID, which is coming from CVP to kick off this effectively bootstrap tickle, which is called comprehensive at this point in time. You also got under the Applications drop-down menu Prompt Management, so you could, in fact, load up prompts uh, onto this particular server. You notice I've created a dummy folder here called the Zombies folder, put some WAV files in there. Uh, so the theory now is that if I wanted to actually play files from this server as opposed to uh, pulling them from a web server somewhere, uh, within my script I could simply set my uh, media server to flash colon, and apparently they would be played directly from here and or using whatever subfolders I might be interested in, in using in this case. So again, I can see the benefit here would be that at some point in time, we'll probably load up AEF files on here, and those AEFs would reference, as they do in Express, local files on this effect of the Express server. So, interesting stuff. Uh, under Subsystems menu, we've got a couple of options here for SIP telephony and speech servers. Uh, this is kind of reverse perspective, taking a look at SIP triggers. You can see what triggers are kicking off which applications, by example. Uh, there's some basic SIP properties with some ringing parameters you can specify as well as some resource availability indicators you can uh, mess around with if you needed to. But again, notice that under SIP triggers, I can see what triggers on the system are kicking off which applications. And again, as uh, mentioned before, 9191 and 9292 kick off the ringtone in our, our snotty lady application there. Unofficial term, by the way. Under speech servers, we've got an ability to put in ASR and TTS servers if you're using those. Uh, we have an ASR and TTS server, only showing you the ASR server here, but uh, listed it by IP address and what port. And uh, if that server is actually running out there, you can see a status of reachable, um, which I suppose is some benefit. Uh, didn't seem to matter as to whether not my application ran as to whether I listed these servers here. So. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. So that's basically it from the VB admin uh, interface. Under tools, of course, there's a plugin for the RTMT, which we would use to maybe gather log files, etc. There's also a reporting um, piece under tools. Haven't messed with that too much yet, so we'll probably have a separate uh, little video on that reporting configuration for the VB, the VVB. Uh, but we also have some command line commands that we can run you probably want to know about um, very much like you know call manager etc anything running on a Linux based system you'd use secure shell to access the server uh, most of your show commands pretty standard for all those Linux based platforms there's a couple of show VVB commands you might use so of course question mark is a good tool here uh, notice up top I'm doing a, a show VVB version you can see I'm running version 11.5. That's uh, not extremely useful. Uh, here we have a, a command called show VVB, show VVB call active voice summary. You might think for that long of a command you're typing in that you might see more output, but just to summarize the listing of how many uh, concurrent calls you might have, I only had one at that point in time, calls per second, so on and so forth. should also be noted that uh, this virtualized voice browser I don't think I mentioned it up front, but it supports stuff like Whisper, Agent Greeting, uh, Courtesy Callback, all that stuff is supported with this virtualized voice browser. That's kind of cool. Uh, interesting of note, there is no shorter version of this command. You can't do like a verbose output of calls or see uh, call legs, at least to my knowledge, with this command. So maybe stand by in the future. There might be some more information about that. Uh, if you're using speech recognition and or text-to-speech. There's a show VVB MRCP, uh, either ASR or TTS command. Here I just used a TTS all command. We've got some text-to-speech running with our VXML application. In this case, my text-to-speech server, you can see it looks like we're interacting with that text-to-speech server. It looks like I had nine successful calls and uh, zero TTS failures. So that's perhaps useful. And uh, maybe last but not least, just to prove that this actually is your voice XML gateway type device, 
I've done a show VVB cache cache entries command. What this uh, really takes the place of is our historical show HTTP client cache on the voice XML gateway where we can actually see what wave files have been out there and fetched from somewhere uh, and um, thus subsequently cached. I don't see uh, there are some ways to use some commands to set your cache size and, and so on and so forth. I don't see yet a, really a way to maybe clear some cache entries uh, effectively, but uh, again, maybe haven't poked around enough with that. So uh, just of interesting note here, we've got some files that came from some of our, uh, we had some um, micro apps in an application that I was using. So we played a welcome message. We Played a couple other wave files, cheesy and wacky hold music, and collected some digits from the caller. So I can see those um, wave files are cached here. So that's kind of it as far as the, uh, I guess, big picture look at the virtualized voice browser. Again, hopefully that helps you. A uh, newer feature, if you will, with CCE, uh, really starting in version 11. Um, and this uh, virtualized voice browser really is supposed to augment slash take the place of historically what you knew as your voice XML gateway. Thanks for tuning in and listening today. We hope that uh, you come back and hear more from us. Uh, visit sunsetlearning.com on the web, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.